And really appreciate your time. Very serious issues that we're debating, uh, not just as a code, but of course as a country and as a global community. Um, just first of all, what was your reaction when you realised that the NRL would have no other choice than to suspend? And, and then how did the players take that news? Yeah, morning, guys. Uh, yeah, I think the... You know, there was, there's been speculation for weeks. Um, we we knew our role in in continuing to play and uh, continuing to offer livelihood for for footy players, for staff members, and also sort of hope for the community. And then, the longer it went, the more the exponential sort of growth of the virus and obviously uh, the deaths. We knew that we were getting to a point where we would close, and and that was yesterday. We we're in the middle of having a meeting about uh, our next step and. Um, and trying to improve uh, self-isolation and then we got the news. So, um, yeah, a bit of shock to begin with. But, um, uh, yeah, it's a tough time. I guess everybody's got their individual uh, needs at this time and, and, and we're trying to deal with that today. Trent, it's Michael Ennis. I mean, how the landscape's changed so quickly. Only a number of weeks back, you, you travelled through Europe, obviously uh, yeah. winning the World Club Challenge and... Um, such a special time for your club and now all of a sudden you know we have what we have take us through what it's like for an NRL coach today what's day one look like yeah so that's yeah Mick it's so today um first thing was we uh obviously talked to the players we were lucky enough to have them all in the room uh when we found out the news uh we were, we were in the middle of organizing our own self-isolation at the end of the week uh in camp and then we got the news that uh, the, the competition to be suspended. So um, we, uh, you know, gave them some, we will get them in tomorrow. So Wednesday, we will get them in and discuss what's what's next for them um, when we get a bit more news. Uh, today, um, obviously, the chief executives and the chairman are meeting with, uh, with Todd and, um, and Peter. Uh, and then post that, we'll start working out uh, questions that we'll have for what happens with staff and players uh, in the short term and medium term and long term. So, uh, but we'll start with the short term today about uh, preparing. So, a, an example that people might want to know is uh, the, the performance staff will start planning yeah. um, programs, individual programs um, for one on, you know, individual guys, how they train at home. So, James Tedesco, for example, um, they will start setting up how does he train on his own in his own home. Okay. Um, so uh, they'll go about doing that. There's obviously some things that people don't realise is there's some people with long-term injuries. So if you've got an ACL in the club, and, and some of the clubs do and we do, um, so what happens over the next couple of months with that player? So Billy Smith did his, did his knee. So what, what happens with his program over the next couple of months to rehab him? The world can't just stop for his knee uh, and, and his progression yeah. um, back to health. Um, so the physios will discuss that. Um, there's a mental health aspect. Um, and we've got a clinical psychologist on board, so he'll start getting around to each player to discuss their individual um, issues. Uh, and then, uh, they, then there's the staffing. So that's a little bit of an insight into what we'll do today. Robo, Matthew Johns, uh, Mick was just hey, talking Johnson. about you guys were over there in uh, in Europe. Well, you guys were in... You're in Spain. You're, you set up camp in Barcelona. Was there any yeah. sense of this developing over there at the time, or anxiety in the community? No, I think like everybody, it felt like a, a you know when you hear things happen and it feels like they're at a distance. They're they're, they're in they're around, but they're not in your world. Yeah. Um, and even in Spain and France, um, you know, a lot of I got family and uh, friends that that live in France at the moment, and they're a couple of weeks ahead of us. And, and you all felt like it was something that happened uh, at a distance in China. There was a couple of isolated cases, but um, uh, there was uh, speculation about it, but it wasn't, it wasn't something that was going to affect us. And then um, I think we got back on the 25th of February uh, and within a week uh, it started to spread and, uh, and affect the areas where we'd just been. Hey, Robbo, you've got like... Um... Great links with the English Super League, particularly the Catalan club. Um, yeah, geez, they're in a precarious situation. Yeah, so the, it's um, there's a couple of things. A, a thing with the socialist government like um, France and what Macron's doing at the moment is uh, they're well supported. Mm. Um, things like he would say, um, he, he said uh, a week ago that. 
no, no, we won't let any small business fall. No matter how small, we will support you. And 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 the socialist side of that, you know, they, they, uh, you know, our best friends have been both stood down from their work. They're in home isolation at the moment, um, but they are getting paid a significant amount of their wage to stay at home. That's the benefits of not earning as much, but also being supported socially. And the other, the, uh, one of the other things I think, uh, just from personal experience with talking with the people over there is um, they are okay. They are in isolation where we'll probably head in a, in a week or two where they've, they've had to stay at home. They've got to sign papers to go out, uh, whether it's to the grocery store or to the bank, uh, but they can't leave for any other reason. Um, but then there's the flip side of it. I'm receiving so many, um, there's a humour that goes with the self-isolation as well. And I'm receiving so many different funny messages and um, and videos of, uh, of people in isolation. And, and it's funny how I think our social connectedness has um, increased the spread of this, but it's also going to get us through it. Yeah. There's a fine line between humour and madness, Robbo. Yeah, that's true. Robbo. And that's, that's France as well, mate. <laughs> mate, we're obviously, you know, it's devastating for everyone and the uncertainty is causing a lot of angst. But selfishly as a coach, and while we're talking rugby league, in the current situation you get so much goes into recruitment, so much goes in, you know, to, to the roster and staff and everything in terms of having success. You know what that looks like. Selfishly, is it a little deflating to know that you've got a side again that's capable of winning the premiership and that may be unable to to resume the season and, and, and fulfil that or have the opportunity to win that? To be honest, until you said that, Mick, I, I, I don't feel that. I feel like we will play again. I feel like the hope is there that we will play and then, yep. and then I'm positive about what we can do as a club. But the, the, other, the whole other side of coaching is um, you know, what, like is the – so the Kel who works on our front desk – you know what's what's she thinking today? Mm. You know what's her day look like today? Um, you know I've talked to Tedesco and and Orbison and friends and Cordner and and those guys and and there's concern amongst the whole playing group and we want to make sure that we look after them. But just outside these doors, there's you know 40 to 50 staff that that walk in every day and and. And there's a whole like people think of when the football shut down that the players on the weekend have been shut down, but there's thousands and thousands of people that that, that come in and, and 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 work in this game and help us survive, and they're unsure about what their day looks like today. So so then moving forward, I mean, we we obviously can't just keep dwelling on it, and as you said, things just can't stop. Does this now give you an opportunity then, rather than all video sessions and tactically as a coach, give you an opportunity to build even closer relationships with your players? Yeah, I think the relationships that you already have, you, you understand that that's the bond that will get you through this. Is it? That, you know, there does seem to be... Um, we're incredibly resilient uh, as a nation and as a sport, um, and it's it's going to hurt. We know it's going to hurt, um, but I'm not. I'm not negative about the future. I'm really positive about the future because of the people involved. That's as I said about the players you have, or the people outside the door, or the people involved in rugby league. Um, we like to fight people in <laughs> rugby league, but we are a family, <laughs> and we are eternally optimistic. That's what we do. That's where we've come from, and um, we know you're going to have. We're going to have to fight over the next few months to stay. Mm. together and fight for our, our sport and for our livelihoods. But in the end, we will rise. So uh, I don't fear for our future, um, but we've got to make sure we support uh, everybody. A bit like Macron said with the small businesses, we've got to get through it. Um, uh, and it is going to hurt, but we do need to work together. Trent, you mentioned that the Roosters did have a self-isolation strategy in place to implement towards the end of the week. What did that look like? And is that something, a survival plan, you can revisit once this premiership resumes? Yeah, so last week um, the, I, I saw one of the press conferences and, and I, th I thought, look, we need to have a strategy here about, um, about self-isolating. So we... Um, we did a lot of research, uh, visited um, some of our staff, visited different um, places, and we ended up settling on a 
on a place up at the Central Coast, um, which was quite isolated. And we we're going to go up there with uh, staff and families um, and players and families. Uh, there was going to be about sort of just under 100 of us going up there on Sunday night uh, and isolating training and playing because um, we knew the importance of it for uh, our club and, and the game and our players. Um, and we also wanted to support uh, the players. They wanted to look after their families. So if we could do both, look after the health of our club and also the performance, uh, that's what we had in plan. And we, we were in the middle of the meeting explaining what we were going to do when we got the message uh, about um, it being suspended. So, um, yeah. yeah, so that we, yeah, that was a, a lot of planning and a lot of work, but we, we thought it was right if we we're going to keep continue to play. Communal living, Robbo. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, we're actually we're looking forward to it as a group. We, you know, we uh, we enjoy spending time together, but uh, it was not in the best of circumstances. Yeah. Well, Trent Robinson, really appreciate your time. Um, this will not be the end of rugby league. Maybe just the end of this premiership first attempt, the first edition. There will be a second chapter in 2020, and we we desperately hope that the Roosters are there and they do get a fair shot at going back to back to back. Viva la rugby league, Robbo! Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Go on, Robbo.